if we can't go off of this court's orders as being orders and you can just come back even on orders that you signed and start arguing about things that happened three years ago um, I, I don't know how that's a workable standard right when I was in the Marines they would say that USMC stood for you signed the mother freaking contract Okay, we're moving on. Next up, page 14, the estate of Wilfred Richard James Bozeman versus Eric William Erika. Let's go ahead and set forth our uh, appearances for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. John Holiday, bar number 13151 for Mr. Bosman. And good morning, Your Honor. Matthew Johnson, bar number 6004 on behalf of the defendants. And uh, once again, good morning. And it's my understanding, uh, Mr. Johnson, this is a motion to reconsider issues regarding, I guess, the discovery in this matter. Bottom line, is that correct, sir? Uh, somewhat correct. Yes, Your Honor. This is a motion to, to reconsider the order entered, uh, I think it was last October, regarding uh, which stipulation governed. And in, in essence, it's also a request for dismissal of the action based on a five-year rule. Um, as your honor may recall, and I won't go, I know you've got a very busy calendar, so I will not go through all of the facts, but as your honor may recall, this case was filed in 2013. There is a companion criminal case that has been, uh, that, that is also pending and is set for trial later this year. <clears throat> um, the, the parties had entered into a stipulation. There are actually three stipulations that are, that are at issue here. The first stipulation was the stipulation filed May 1st, 2018. And in that stipulation, we agreed, agreed to a number of points regarding discovery. And one of those points was that there would be no discovery uh, regarding Mr. Errico or his, uh, no evidence taken from him or his firm until the criminal case was resolved, including appeals. There was also language in that stipulation, and this is, again, this is the May 1st, 2018 stipulation. I'm referring to page four, uh, and what that says is the parties stipulate and agree that they will not seek any discovery, initially it said regarding defendants. I cross that out, put my initials, uh, and, and so now it says the parties stipulate and agree they will not seek any discovery regarding William Errico, either individually or in his capacity as an officer and or as a person most knowledgeable of William K. Errico and Associates, including taking depositions or requesting documents or evidence of defendant William Errico, either individually, etc. It then went on and talked about the right to invoke the constitutional right uh, to plead, to, to invoke the Fifth Amendment. And what we said in that stipulation on May 1st, 2018, is that he could, in fact, plead the Fifth Amendment in discovery or any other time and there shall be no adverse inference again i'm reading at page four approximately line 24. no striking of pleadings no barring of evidence and or other adverse effect against defendant william Merico for invoking constitutional rights once the criminal case is fully resolved including any appeals plaintiffs intend to take the deposition etc um we then entered into the, the this stipulation this court signed that order and it was entered by the court i believe on uh, yes, May 1st in, in open court. Subsequently, there were some, some things that Your Honor wanted and there were some dates that needed to be changed, as you'll recall. Uh, some of those were dates regarding some of the scheduling, some of the discovery deadlines, etc. And you also wanted to place into the order a drop-dead date for by when the trial must be must be commenced. There was another order sent over reason, on May 20th. And, and Mr. Johnson... I don't want to cut you off, but there's a reason for that because that's what Nevada law mandates. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and it so, wasn't something. It wasn't something I just wanted to require. And to be candid with everyone, uh, number one, that's what the law requires first and foremost. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to make sure everyone was apprised of what the law requires. And last but not least, uh, it kind of makes my job easier because. Um, the Nevada Supreme Court says, look, it's okay, you can waive the five-year rule, but you make sure you have a, uh, not a unlimited waiver, but you have to have a date certain as far as when the five-year rule will, will run. 
That's all I wanted to do, but go ahead, sir. And that makes sense, Your Honor, because that gives everyone notice this is when it runs, this is when it expires, and the trial must occur before that. So what happened next is on May 28th, in a follow-up of that discussion that we had, um, the plaintiff's counsel sent over an amended stipulation in order, and we, as Your Honor will recall, it was changed. And I don't know, Your Honor, whether it was done intentionally or whether it was done unintentionally, but the bottom line is there were several key uh, agreed upon, argued about agreements that were left out of the amended order. And it could be, Your Honor, that what happened is they took the took it from a different version because we had been going back and forth. I'm not here saying that the, you know these guys are, are, are committing fraud and attempting to, to leave out these agreed upon items, but ultimately what happened is it got sent over the 28th. We had another hearing on the 29th, and that's why it was a, it was a rush to get it done. We all signed the, that order, and what that order said, it, let, it left out the provisions about discovery of Mr. Errico and his firm. It said that any discovery could be taken other than taking the deposition of Mr. Errico, which was not what we had ever agreed on in exchange for the agreement to waive the five-year rule. And then it did have, as Your Honor required, a date, and it said that the court uh, would extend it, the five-year rule, until December 2nd, 2019. Now, it took about a month for that order to get entered. It was entered on June 25th, 2019. At the last hearing of which we were requesting reconsideration, Your Honor looked at the two orders, the May 1st one and the June 25th, and said, well, the June 25th <coughs> control. Now, the third order, that stipulation order, that's, that's also important, and I think key to this, is one that was entered on November 18th, 2019. Um, and in that, in that stipulation and order... Um, Again, some deadlines were amended, and then the, stipul the stipulation order extended the five-year rule. And what that says, page 6 of the November 18, 2019 stipulation and order is, the parties reiterate their agreement to waive the five-year rule provisions uh, pursuant to NRCP 41E and agree that trial in this matter shall occur no later than December 15, 2020, unless another stipulation is entered into between the parties, further extending the five-year rule. So the agreement was, they get until December 15, 2020, unless there's another stipulation. Well, Your Honor, there is no further stipulation. Of course, what happened then is this pandemic occurred. The court entered into various administrative orders, and on June 4th, 2021, the court issued Administrative Order 20-13, and what that order did, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize, <laughs> June 4th, 2021, was, was Administrative Order 21-04, and what that order said at page 16, line 8, that the order continues a stay in trial of civil cases pursuant to the tolling of NRCP 41 until July 1st, 2021. Now, if you look at the original administrative order, that actually gives you until the court says otherwise, which now is July 1st, 2021, that says plus 30 days. So it's either July 1st, 2021, or possibly August 1st, 2021. Regardless, <coughs> the point is this. The five-year rule has never been extended past that November 18th, 2019 stipulation. It was never extended past December of 2020. If you apply the administrative rule, it was never extended past July 1st or August 1st, 2021. And here we are now in January of 2022. I don't think the court has a choice. I think that the rule is clear. I think that the the law is clear. I think all of the Supreme Court cases and the administrative orders are clear. This case had to have been tried by no later than, and let's give them the benefit of the doubt, August 1st, 2021. Um, it wasn't, and I think that the case should be dismissed. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. What we should do, Your Honor, is if the, if Your Honor is going to say no, you know, with all the intent of the parties was we were going to extend this past the criminal trial, and I agree that was the intent of the parties. 
But the intent of the parties was also that the May 1st order, the provisions contained in the May 1st stipulation order would be applicable, i.e., no waiver of the, would not be adverse inference if there was an invocation of the Fifth Amendment rights. There would be no ability to take discovery of Mr. Errico, of Mr. Errico's company, documents, et cetera. We got a document dump a week or so, the last week or so, of over 21,000 pages of Mr. Errico's documents that they obtained as a result of the last order. We would respectfully request that the court dismiss the case based on the five-year rule, and we would also request, Your Honor, if the court decides not to do that, that it reconsider and go back to the May 1st order, which was the intent of the parties. I don't think the parties, we've all acted as if that was our intent, and I think that that's what should be done if the court says, no, I'm not going to dismiss, but I'm going to move forward. I think that in that event, then we need to go back to those provisions that were contained, were negotiated for in good faith, everyone thought was the case. We acted as if that was the case, and then all of a sudden, we realized several years down the road, oh, well, these provisions were left out. And again, I'm not saying it was intentional on the part of Mr. Vann's office. I think that it may have been unintentional because there were versions going back and forth, and somehow this version got used. It was the day before a hearing, and for those reasons, I would respectfully request the relief that we've requested, dismissal, or if there's no dismissal, then I would respectfully request that the court apply the May 1st provisions. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. And we'll hear from the opposition. Thank you, Your Honor. So, I think that what Mr. Johnson is asking for is an impossible standard. If we can't go off of this court's orders as being orders, and you can just come back, even on orders that you signed, and start arguing about things that happened three years ago, I don't know how that's a workable standard, right? When I was in the Marines, they would say that USMC stood for, you signed the mother freaking contract, and this stipulation has Mr. Johnson's signature on it. And reading from his reply, he said in defendant's motion to reconsider, page 10, footnote 1, I explicitly cited the November 18th, 2019 stipulation and order explaining that the five-year rule expiration date expired on December 15th, 2020. There was no perjury. The footnote made it clear. And even plaintiff admits at page four of its oppositions that the party stipulated to extend the five-year rule to December 15th, 2020. And that's because in his affidavit, he said on the same motion that the June stipulation and order that originally extended the five-year rule to a firm deadline never got extended again, right? And he tries to protect himself in the reply by saying, well, you know, 10 pages later in a buried footnote, I admit that that's not true, so I didn't commit perjury, right? But it just shows that even filling out this affidavit, he knew that wasn't true and he was putting it in there. And now he's asking this court to take all of his oral representations about what was going on three years ago to undo this court's order. Now, as for the discovery, discovery closed two days ago, so the discovery portion is completely moot. As for saying that it needs to be dismissed, I think this court has spoken before and is unlikely to be dismissing the case because of the delay caused by COVID. There have been Supreme, there's going to be Supreme Court orders on this. There were administrative orders. And so I don't really want to waste the court and everyone else's time arguing that COVID doesn't get us past the December 15th, 2020 date. If the court does feel like that argument is something that holds water, I would just ask the court to let me know and then I will go ahead and argue that orally. But I don't think that it's necessary to dismiss the case. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you to both counsel. We'll take this case under submission.
But <clears throat> I, I don't mind saying this, and uh, I remember the history of this case uh, very well. I remember some of the preliminary motions that were filed in this case. And at the end of the day, um, uh, what I try to do is this. If the parties are getting along and stipulating uh, on specific issues, uh, I try not to get in the way, and that's what I was doing. Um, and understand this, when I look at these, how cases are being handled, I don't look at it through the lens of how I would have handled a specific matter. I look at it and say, okay, what are the parties are, what are the parties trying to accomplish? And I think one of the primary issues in this case was essentially this, uh, and everyone agreed on this. They wanted to wait until uh, Mr. Errico's criminal matter was, was concluded by a jury trial and or some sort of negotiated plea. That's what everyone was on the same page. Consequently, the can was kicked down the road by stipulation as it pertained to taking his deposition, right? Unfortunately, and you don't see this very often, in fact, I can't remember this ever happening where a criminal case has been kicked down the road uh, this far, right? Because when was the original criminal matter set for trial? Does anyone remember that? Your Honor, I don't remember be. exactly, but it was probably 2015-ish. Yeah, that's my point. And so, um, um, I think it's somewhat unforeseen that would be that we, we would be in the predicament we're in today when the parties first agreed upon kicking the can down the road. And I realize, I think, Mr. Johnson, you were concerned about Fifth Amendment issues, and we had the discussion. I, I do understand and know what the law is in that area. You know, you could, but I didn't want to get in the way. And now we are where we are, you know. Um, um, in fact, I think the first trial date in this matter was set for um, August 21st, 2017, right? And, um, and, and there, there are other concerns I have in this case in this regard. I mean, for example, if there was dismissal, and, and this is what's so unique about this case, I think there's no dispute that Mr. Uh, Wilfred Richard James Bozeman, unfortunately, um, uh, is incapable. And uh, uh, as a result of that, as a result of his mental capacity, um, uh, there would be tolling of the statute of limitations in this case anyway. And we talked about that back in 2015, 2016, somewhat in that time period. And so, um, uh, for example, if there was a dismissal, what would be the impact of that, you know? And, and, and every case is so unique, it's easy to say, well, um, it's cut and dry. I don't know in this case whether it's cut and dry or not based upon the capacity of Mr. Uh, Unfortunately, of uh, Wilfred uh, Richard James Bozerman um, and so on. But nonetheless, I have, I do have a, a 41E issue in this case. And um, it's a dilemma. It, it just is. Your Honor, is there anything else? Yeah, go ahead. ahead. Something to, as well. I just wanted to say, you know, Mr. Holliday started this off. I'm talking about, hey, Mr. Johnson signed the stipulation. But if we go back to the November 18th, 2019 stipulation, I've got a signature there of, it looks like Mr. Chase. I can't, I'm not 100% so but it looks like Garrett Chase signed the stipulation on behalf of the plaintiff. And what does it say? It says, the parties agree that trial in this matter shall occur no later than December 15th, 2020 unless another stipulation is entered into between the parties. So if he's going to say, look, we have to stick with what we said, then they have to stick with what they said. And I'm right, also... Yeah, I mean, there, just for the record, COVID I'm happened. Like, COVID happened. Everything has been kicked out because of COVID. And I don't think that there's any dispute that this trial was extended beyond because of COVID. And your honor, and, and, and trust me, I understand that I do, um, and understand this. When I, for the record, when I was saying, "Look, gentlemen, uh, we need to have a date certain as far as the extension of the five-year rule," all that was was a gentle nudge by me to say, "Look, guys, 
get on board here. I got to have this. And to be candid with you, I don't want to deal with this type of motion down the road. Because the reason why I did that was this, because one of two things would have happened. If he didn't agree, and he didn't give me a date certain, what I would do is this. Okay, let's bring a jury in, let's go to trial. Right? Because um, um, I looked at it from this perspective. I understood and respected the respective positions regarding all the parties involved in this case. And I went, went ahead and, and, and agreed to it. It's unforeseen that this criminal matter has still not resolved yet, right? There's no trial yet. Is there even one pending now? There, there is one tr pending, Your Honor. There's a motion to dismiss next week, and then there's a trial pending. I think it's in May, if I recall correctly. Right. Yes, and so, is. and that's approximately what six or seven years after the first trial date set in that case. I, I, again, I'm not certain on the dates. It was a, but a, it, it's several <laughs> years. For sure. Yeah, you understand where I'm going, though. I mean, I'm just I, saying, I do, Your Honor. And and, and again, yeah. I, I I think that I think this is this comes down to what's good as goose. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. If they're gonna if they're gonna say, hey, well, Mr. Johnson signed that stipulation, which for whatever reason left out all of the things that we had agreed to and all those protections and all those things that were bargained for, negotiated hard hard negotiations to obtain, then fine. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And this case had to be tried no later. Than December fifteenth, twenty twenty. Period. And even if we say, well, COVID happened, and yes, it did. I agree. You know, then fine. Let's look at the administrative order, which says that it's that it goes to J July fifteenth, twenty twenty one, and we're still seven months later. And it must be. And I, I don't mind saying this, and this is more of an observation than anything. I remember in the fall when these issues were being discussed, my thoughts were, why are we making a big to deal about Mr. Erico and his potential discovery? Uh, in light of the fact that Mr. Johnson's not making a big deal about the five-year rule. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> right? right? Because my understanding was we weren't doing any discovery on Mr. Errico. And and uh, then when that all turned around, that's when I said, look, okay, fine. If you're going to push that, then we're going to push our, our rights under the stipulation. And I want to put point out for the for the for the stat for the because I don't mind saying this. I didn't understand that. I was sitting here saying to myself, "And look, I'm not a litigator. I mean, I stopped litigating cases 16 years ago, but I can sure spot issues." And I was concerned at that time. I don't mind saying that. And I was concerned. And I don't want to cut you off, Mr. Johnson. I was concerned that ultimately we would end up being in the position we're in right now. Um, and now we're in this position. But go ahead, sir. Um, I, I wanted to point out for the record as well, Your Honor talked about, hey, it's, it's crystal clear. We argued this years ago about the fact that Mr. Bosserman is uh, in his mental capacity. The, the statute of limitations couldn't toll. You know, we all thought that because what I was told is that Mr. Bosserman was a vegetable. I was accused of committing perjury again in this in this opposition. Mr. Uh, it, it, it stated in, in, in Mr. Holliday's declaration that he went out there and talked to him, and he, and he said, look, I, I talked to him, he's, he, because he's got a tracheotomy, he could only do one-word answers, but he, he understood what I was saying, could give responsive answers. You know, he, he, I, w I was shocked. I thought the guy was sitting there as a vegetable. If he can give responsive answers and can talk, not, not he does one-word answers, I don't know that he is, and it has, I don't know that his mental capacity is at issue. I want to make sure that that's clear for the record. Um, and the fact that he had the a guardian in place as well to protect his rights, I, 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 I still am not certain on the tolling issue. I know that your, your honors ruled on that, and that's something that I guess was for down the road. But at the end of the day, I, I think that if, if the court is going to enforce the, the stipulation without the provisions that we negotiated for, bargained for in good faith, then the court has to enforce the entire stipulation, and that is... The case has to get dismissed because it was only agreed to continue it to December 15th, 2020. Okay, and what's the response to that one question from the plaintiff? Uh, which one was that, Your Honor? No, no, I'm looking from the plaintiff, the one okay. where you said, look, Judge, you just went ahead and teed it up. You said, look, Judge, uh, if you're going to uh, not enforce the agreed-upon stipulation as it pertains to discovery issues... Uh, then, you know what, uh, that opens up the door for the five-year rule issue. I think that's what you were saying in essence. Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. Yes. All right, so the reason we went out is because of COVID, right? Now, if 
Your Honor wants to dismiss because the date that was set because of the COVID delays. Understand this. Understand. I don't want to do anything. I only understand this because independently, I don't want to do anything because I I shouldn't be proactive as a judge doing things uh, to do things unless, of course, uh, for example, a case of this sits and there's no activity. Of course, I have to do things from a case management perspective. But when it comes to issues regarding uh, open cases that are both represented, I only tee up what is teed up in front of me and I make decisions based upon law and motion. All right. Well, discovery's closed. We're set for trial in March. Um, they haven't disclosed any evidence of any medical bills being paid. Um, the Guardians just filed a supplemental report that identifies the checks that Erico received, totaling uh, <coughs> about one million seventy thousand. And I, I get that, but I'm talking about Your Honor. It's it's his well, burden of proof. Listen to me. Listen yeah. to me. Listen to me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what he's made. He, he's, sir, you got to listen to what he's saying. He said, look, judge, if you don't reconsider that, I want you to enforce the five year rule. Five year rule was waived until December of 2020, and it got pushed out past the original date because of COVID. Now, Relying on this court's earlier representations and hearings, you said, you said, Your Honor, COVID pushed things out. Okay, but and at the, the court, end of the and, day, do you want me to calculate when COVID pushed things out? Because I don't think you understand what's going to happen here. I really don't. I don't think you appreciate what's going on potentially. That that right. date has been well, given to us, Your Honor. July. If you look again, uh, I'll quote to him if he wants to see it. It's page sixteen of Administrative yeah. Order twenty one dash oh four, filed June fourth, twenty twenty one, and it says the order stays, the, the COVID stays in effect until July first, twenty twenty one, and then it says unless the court makes findings to lift the stay in a specific case to allow the case to be tried. So the dead the deadline was over July first, twenty twenty one, seven months ago. Real clear. Yes, COVID happened, but the courts lifted that. And the date was July first, twenty twenty one. And we're now in January of twenty twenty two. Court set the trial date when it set it in twenty twenty two. So um if your if your honor wants to revisit now whether and analyze the COVID stay, then I would need to Go through these orders and file a further brief. His original this motion is, this, wasn't this on is, this. this. Is what it I'm going to do, sir. I'm going to. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a chance to do a lot of things. Uh, number one, uh, I don't think during the course and scope of this case, I don't think Mr. Johnson's been unreasonable. I don't think prior counsel, from a plaintiff's perspective, has been unreasonable. Uh, but there are some some issues here, and. Uh, I'm going to give you time to sit back and think about it, number one. Number two, and if you want to do more research, that's fine. I'm really going to take a close look at the record. Uh, just as important, too, I'm going to give you a chance to uh, uh, revisit these issues and, and talk to Mr. Johnson also. So what I'm going to do for today is this. So I'm not going to make a decision today. Uh, I'm going to reschedule. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to continue this hearing for two weeks. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you time, sir, to sit back and, 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 and do what you have to do, talk to Mr. Johnson, uh, maybe reassess your position right now. Because uh, at the end of the day, I'm looking at it from this perspective. Um, uh, throughout probably 80% or 90% of this case, uh, both plaintiff's counsel and defense counsel were on the same page. In principle, they were. And now we've had this deviation uh, and uh, from the plaintiff's perspective, and it might impact the ultimate outcome as far as how this case is handled procedurally. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance to look very closely at the orders. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance to look at the administrative order and so on. And so, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to give you a chance to talk to him, too, uh, because I understand what the spirit was. And this is a very unique case. I'd rather have issues resolved now versus on the Supreme Court level. Of course, if you want to do that, that's your right. And I'll make the decisions. 
But for now, sir, I'm listening to you. I'm going to give you a chance to uh, take a look at this, and you can tell me what you need. Uh, but two weeks will be. Two weeks. Fortunately, our trial may be. Yes. Uh, that week is open. Uh, Thursday, January 27th at 9.05 a.m. All right. Okay, sir. Okay, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. Plaintiff's, okay. plaintiff's counsel. Is that fine, sir? Um. I'll be here on the 27th, Your Honor. Okay, sir. And uh, Enjoy your day. Both and just so we're clear, I'm going to review the administrative order and file a supplemental brief. Or, I, sir, I didn't or, know we were doing a supplemental brief. No, we're not doing, no, we're, we're going, we're not going to do any briefing yet. If you need to, you can have, request that. What I want you to do is review the facts and so on and so on and, and, and tell me what your position is and maybe talk to Mr. Johnson. It seems to me that there can be some sort of accord here. And... I don't know if you see it that way, but think about it. And we'll come back in two weeks. Yeah, if, I, Your Honor, I was going to say, if there's going to be supplemental briefing that's going to cost my client additional funds, I would... I would no, there's not going to be any supplemental briefing yeah. right now. There's not going to. I would request they get dismissed, but thank you. We'll, we'll go see you in two weeks. All right, two weeks. Everyone enjoy your day. You too.